Okay. Well, uh, we're back here, um, currently breaking in the main stage um, before our last presentation of the day from Philip Morris. Um, but right now, uh, I'm joined um, by Catherine Eby from Walmart. Uh, Catherine, thank Hi you so there. much for being here. I'm so glad to be here. It's been a really great day, really interesting sessions and discussion. Fantastic, fantastic. Yeah. So, you know, I thought maybe what might make the most sense um, would be to give the virtual audience a sense of kind of your role sure. at Walmart yeah. and the things that you're kind of focused on. Yeah, great. So I've worked in environmental and social sustainability for around 20 years. About two and a half years ago, I started up a new role and a new function at Walmart, really looking at ESG specifically. So what is entailed in that? Part one is understanding what are the ESG issues of today that Walmart needs to be responsive to, but then also what are the issues we need to be looking to in the future. The second part is being really focused in some of our communications so that we're really meeting the investor audience specifically with the information that they're going to find the most decision useful. And then the third part is there's all of this interest and appetite out there for how do we really measure good ESG? What is the right metric? And so really trying to say, yes, this is the right conversation, but we're really just at the beginning of that. And so we need to be working together to define what that universe of, of good corporate performance really looks like. And then how do you hold companies accountable? Fantastic. That's great. Um, one question I asked Stephen from KPMG yeah. earlier in the day, um, but wanted to, before I get into some of the other questions yeah. that I wanted to ask you, I wanted to get your hot take on the uh, first session on the business roundtable yeah. statement purpose of a corporation. Yeah, it was so great to listen to. Um, I think one of the things, just to set some context for the audience, we are on the, we are a member of the business roundtable. Doug, my CEO, is currently the chairperson of the BRT, so we, we've been highly engaged and heavily involved in all these discussions, and specifically BRT's movement to put stakeholders at the heart of business value, rather than this former model of shareholder uh, primacy. So, I, you know, I was really pleased by the remarks where they said it's about yes and. So it's shareholder and, stakeholder and. It's not one or the other. And I think companies that are really thinking through how do they how do they meet the needs of their customers, how do meet, they meet the needs of their workers, the communities where they operate, mm -hmm. should outperform in the long term those companies that ignore all of those factors. Fantastic, fantastic. Um, so maybe um, first question, I guess, off the post yeah. the BRT. Um, so Walmart has an incredible amount of influence within the supply chain, Yeah. right? Um, can you maybe share how you, because you lead the team that focuses on ESG, how you actually think about the E, the S, and yeah. the G? Yeah, so our core mission, our business purpose, is really helping people save money and live better. And we spend an awful lot of time talking about the save money, less about the live better. And we we can argue and we can talk about the fact that just by driving down costs for people on basic household staples is in essence helping people live better. Um, but what me and my team and the broader group in global responsibility spend a lot of time doing is thinking through how do we then uh, create and build our strategy oriented towards shared value, which is really the heart, and I, I spoke about Doug, it's part of the heart of our, our corporate strategy. So how are we delivering value for the business, but also, also critically, how are we adding value for society? And it's through things like understanding what our key issues are, mm -hmm. how do we drive change across the business, how do we transform the supply chain and get our suppliers moving in, in quote unquote, the right direction, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then how are we thinking about working with others, peers, competitors, suppliers, uh, civil society to try and drive change. And then finally, this whole notion of systems change. So where do we really fundamentally need to rewire and, and transform the system so that it is helping create an enabling environment for all of our, all of our stakeholders? and our business to operate successfully. Fantastic. So maybe, if you could maybe just give us a sense of yeah. maybe what some of the current ESG priorities yeah. that Walmart is working on yep. at, at the present time? Yeah, yeah. So the three that really do rise to the top are action on climate change, uh, human capital management, so how are we thinking about offering good jobs today and good jobs in the future? And then finally, how are we driving sustainability forward, uh, both environmentally and socially in the supply chain? But I would say a keen focus right now is looking at some of those social issues, which are so complex. Interesting. Okay, wonderful. Um, I want to touch on climate because I know that yeah. you guys do a lot of work on we climate. We do. And so I was wondering if maybe if you could just share with the audience, 
just some of the key climate initiatives that yeah. you're currently focused on? Yeah, I'm going to take advantage and say we have been working on climate change since 2005 when our CEO at the time said climate change is an urgent challenge. So this is a long-standing strategy. We see a lot of business value that can be captured through action mm -hmm. on climate. Mm -hmm. um, but what we're doing today, one, we've done a climate uh, scenario analysis and planning, which is really helpful in validating the strategies that we have underway. Two, we are really focused on mitigation, so setting a science-based target and then driving forward. We're on track to do that in our own operations, so scope one and two. I believe we're down about 6% since our baseline. Uh, and then working through a program called Project Gigaton, mm -hmm. which uh, has currently got north of 2,000 suppliers taking actions on climate for doing things like changing the energy mix that they use, packaging, working on waste, and so really trying to get those suppliers working towards the same end goal on, on driving down their emissions. And we just reported, we had our earnings last week where we shared that we had helped to avoid 200 million metric tons of emissions since the program's launch. So we're really having impact at scale. Um, and then finally, I would say we're doing a lot of work on the resiliency side, both thinking through our own operations as they may and may not be impacted by things like severe weather, mm -hmm. and also, of course, our supply chain. Chain. And then finally, uh, when I talked about systems change, a lot of the systems change work means we need sound public policy in place. And so spending a lot of time advocating for urgent action on climate. I was in Paris and I was in Bonn during the UN COPs really talking about the business case for action on climate. Fantastic. That's wonderful. And then just one last thing before we uh, yeah. turn it back over. Um, I know you guys do a lot with disaster relief. We do. Could you maybe just touch on we that? We do. Part of our origin story when we think about sustainability, it's, its roots are really in Hurricane Katrina, where we responded in the wake of that storm the way that we really wanted to in, in terms of providing aid and support to the communities and our associates that were impacted. Uh, and our, our CEO, who I just spoke about, Lee Scott, at that time said, you know, we were a really great company when we responded that day. What if we were that company every single day? And so that really set our trajectory forward on, on really all things sustainability broadly defined, all things ESG. Um, but it has been disaster relief, disaster response has been a core part of how we have engaged and met with local communities and provided urgent help in a time of need. And I think over the last couple of years, we've given away something like $50 million worth uh, of aid and food and supplies here in the U.S. Uh, we've got a, a, a great emergency operations center that is looking at all sorts of weather trends, issues, uh, things that are, are at play so that we can make sure that we've planned in advance of an anticipated storm, for example, mm -hmm. but then also are monitoring the situation in real time and can move and adjust and, and, and move product that is needed, move uh, support that is needed to really respond so that we're back up and running just as soon as we can be in the event of a, of a storm, for example. Fantastic. That's wonderful. Well, uh, Catherine, uh, it looks like we're going to be getting started in just a moment back on the main stage with Philip Morris, but I um, wanted to thank you for taking the time to be with